Hello, Orangeville. My name is Jeff Patterson, and I want to work for you. I am a candidate to be the mayor of Orangeville. So I'm going to ask for your vote on October 24. Now I'm going to tell you why you should vote for Jeff Patterson. I have three messages to leave with you. Number one, value. Number two, customer focus. That's you. And number three, cost control. The town of Orangeville's budget has been out of control. It needs to be brought back in line. And while I'm doing that, we are going to freeze taxes for the next four years to give us an opportunity to realign the town's services in a customer-focused way and deliver those services in an efficient manner that meets your needs. So why Patterson? Well, I'm a local business guy. I'm passionate about the town and I'm very, very excited about its future. The current council has recently developed the five-year strategy and in their strategy, they're talking about increasing taxes. Have before, continue to do it. I'm going to freeze those taxes to give us an opportunity to focus in on service delivery and the cost of delivery. So come October 24, vote for Jeff Patterson for value, customer service, the ability to control costs, and we'll build this town for the future that we can all share in a better community. But please get out on vote on October 24 and make sure you vote for Jeff Patterson. Why should you vote Post for mayor on October 24th, 2022? That's a great question. I'm Lisa Post, I'm rooted in community, and I'm so pleased to be here to introduce myself to you today. For the last four years, I've been honored to serve as one of your town councillors, and I've prioritized serving with integrity and professionalism. Thoughtful decision-making, fiscal responsibility, and inclusive community building have been key to the progress that we've made since the last election. I have made myself accessible for residents for open dialogue, whether it be to address an issue or a concern in your neighborhood or on a council agenda, to listen to ideas on how to make the community better or safer, or simply to answer questions on how to navigate some of our town services. These are qualities that I will bring with me to the mayor's office. These next four years are crucial to our community. We're still feeling the sting of the pandemic and we're working to recover and rebuild, all while the rising cost of living is weighing heavily on all of us. This is our opportunity to shape the future of our town. I'm committed to addressing affordability by meeting inflationary pressures with tight budget constraints and building partnerships with other levels of government to find affordable housing solutions. Your voice, ideas, and concerns deserve to be heard and reflected in our decision making and accountability matters. I will commit to hosting regular town hall forums, to implementing a seniors task force and to reintroducing the mayor's youth committee. Safe, equitable and inclusive community building requires the prioritization of infrastructure and initiatives that improve accessibility. Neighborhoods like Rolling Hills and Settlers Creek are great examples of how important the safety of our roads are to residents. I will continue to prioritize these safety measures and continue implementing com traffic calming strategies. We need a flexible plan to attract good paying employers to Orangeville. This requires a mayor with a focus on teamwork to start conversations across sectors and all levels of government to elevate our community profile. We need to look at growing sectors in tech and tourism industries to start and always be searching for new opportunities. The vision, a place where our businesses prosper, our neighborhoods flourish, and our children come back to live and raise their families. A town where people of all ages and in all stages of life can thrive. A community that is sustainable and can stand up to future challenges. 
on October 24th, 2022, take the opportunity to put a proven voice for the residents in the mayor's office. Let's work together to build the Orangeville we all want with a vote for post. Thank you. Hello, Orangeville. My name is Kim Reed, and I would be honored to be your next mayor. I have lived and worked in Orangeville for the past 30 years. I have raised five children here, and now my grandchildren reside here. Over the past four years, we've seen a large turnaround in our town. The main reason is people just can't afford to live here anymore. Taxes have increased in excess of 10% in the last four years not to mention water and hydro rates. Many politicians make promises at election time to lower or even not raise taxes. I'm not here to do that. I'm not going to make you promises that I can't keep. I'm going to go out and find out the answers and see why we need to do the things we do to make our town better. If you have concerns, please bring them to me and we can find out answers together. Let's make Orangeville strong and grow together. Hello, I'm Jeremy Williams, and I'm asking you to vote for me in the upcoming Orangeville election. I spent eight years of my life working hard to make our town's finances strong, to ensure our streets are well-maintained, our parks beautiful, and our community safe from crime, and our water safe to drink. The many awards won during that time attest to that. As your former mayor, I worked to reduce decades of accumulated deficit made under former councils. I led the way to reducing our debt and built up our long depleted reserves. Despite a council with diverse views, it's important to note that every single council meeting I chaired ended in a consensus vote. Tough decisions were made, energetically debated and resolved. Decisions made after consultations with the public. The tough choices we made then are paying off now. I don't want to see more reserves spent and bringing on new debt while infrastructure work is being deferred. Putting off expenses into the future always costs more in the end. Our town had three jewels unique among towns in Orangeville. We had a police force that we controlled. We were able to bring in revenue for police checks and related activities. That kept the budget frozen. Now we have a service controlled by the province. They tell us how much to pay. We had a railway that brought tourism and the stability of economical and eco-friendly product shipment that our local industries relied on. The impact to our environment and roads will be a sad legacy of this short-sighted decision. Of the three other candidates running, my greatest concern is with the voting record of Lisa Post. It should concern you too. On a personal level, I like Lisa, but not her voting voting record on council. Lisa voted to permanently uproot over 300 years of history with her vote to throw away OPS into the dumpster and uprooted our railway, selling off the rails for scrap. I don't want more short-term thinking, but what about the third jewel in the crown of Orangeville? Orangeville Hydro. I've heard the rumors selling Orangeville Hydro would be a huge mistake. Although they don't control the cost of hydro, they do control the cost of distribution and they are among the cheapest in Ontario. Any profit they do make goes to reduce your taxes. I've seen enough of my town uprooted over the last four years. I don't want to see any more. With your support, I intend to focus on the basics, the boring things like taking a serious look at our high water costs, completing the Hanson Road connection. I want to move away from a focus on social issues like free transit and getting back to roads, low taxes and long-term strategic planning. I've always been there for you. Now I ask you to take the time to support me with your vote. Thank you for your time. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, Orangeville, depending upon what time Orangeville gets this broadcast from Rogers. Um, I'm here running for the Deputy Mayor of Orangeville. 
My name's Trevor Castiglione. I've run in very many elections now and been involved in many of the elections. Um, I've done many things in the community uh, over the years. Unfortunately, with COVID, we've been limited to what we've been able to do. Uh, my Toys for Tots drive, um, the dinners for seniors, things like that, we've had a very difficult time trying to do during COVID. Orangeville Council itself has had a very difficult time during COVID. All of us have. Um, to me, the reason the people of Orangeville need to look for real leadership is what we have coming in front of us. We're not out of the woods with this COVID yet. Our interest rates are going through the roof and our property taxes continue to climb uh, in excess of 10% in the past four years with this previous council. Um, we have projects that are very, very expensive. And I think there's ways to save money for the taxpayers of Orangeville, many ways. Uh, we're all going to have to tighten our belts over the next few years because of the upcoming, and in my view, recession that we're all looking at. Um, some of the things that I've been reading about or researching or having the public speak to me about are, for instance, the Hanson Road being closed still. Previous council had said that they were going to work hard to get it open. Well, it's still not open. I think council needs to work a little harder, a lot harder. Those poor people are on an, an island, completely separate from Orangeville. And to me, that's not right. Alder Rec Center, well, that's another thing. Money pit, if you ask me. And these are all things that we, as Orangeville, need to work together to solve. We can't be separated. We all need to work together. The people of Orangeville need to have much more communication with council. They can't be restricted like they currently have been. Again, my name's Trevor Castiglione and I'm running for deputy mayor. Hi, Orangeville. My name is Todd Taylor and I have decided to run for deputy mayor in the upcoming election here in town. It's, uh, it's been a, a goal of mine uh, to be on council. I wanted to be able to give back to my community. And this time I've decided to step up and run for deputy mayor. Four years ago, I ran simply because I thought that Orangeville deserved better. And not arrogantly, but uh, I wanted to contribute in a way that would allow council to be professional and viewed as such by others. I guess my fear was I didn't want to embarrass myself in front of my family and friends as I had the role. And here we are four years later, and I feel like I've done a good job. I guess my great joy is, is uh, I had transferable skills. So from my business career into council, I was able to utilize things like organization and getting back to people and being professional. Um, I guess my downside is, is I didn't understand that council was a job. And that job takes a tremendous amount of time and energy constantly. The good news is I really enjoyed it. And I think if I were to advise, I would say to anyone who is thinking of voting that you should judge someone's past actions to decide how they'll do in the future. And for me, that means, what did you do? How did you help your community move forward? And prior to being on council, I wrote some things down so I wouldn't forget them. I was the president of the Mono Nordic Ski Club. I've been the president of the Orangeville Optimist Club. I've done a tremendous amount of volunteer work with Christmas in the Park and I've been a board member for Theatre Orangeville. Within council, I was the chair of the police services board. I've been the chair of the library board. I've been the chair of the transportation committee and I've been on the committee of adjustment. Net, I have experience. So why do all this? Honestly, I enjoy it. It's not work for me. I like serving the community in which I live. I like helping others. I'm passionate about it. So in the future, I think what people should be looking for is someone like myself, someone who's fiscally responsible, someone who's now an experienced leader four years later, and someone will champion safe neighborhoods, which I have done. 
I guess my, my pitch to everyone is, in this brief three minute video that I have, is my plan is to continue to do as I did in the past. And that is, I will be approachable, Orangeville. I will be available for you and I will continue to get things done. Thank you very much. On election day, I hope you'll support me for deputy mayor. Greetings, this is Orangeville Councillor Joe Andrews and I'm seeking re-election as Councillor to Orangeville Council on October 24th. I've been part of Orangeville's fabric for over 30 years. I'm known for my commitment to this region as a leader in education, business, as well as an award-winning volunteer of countless community activities and organizations. In 2018, I was honored and humbled to be elected to Orangeville Council, a role which I have immersed myself in in supporting the people of our community. I brought to the table years of senior level experience in both the public and private sectors being responsible for significant multi-million dollar budgets while understanding the relationship between the taxpayer and services required to support a growing community. Having this background has paid huge dividends. I deem civility, consensus building and accountability as key priorities of mine. I consistently displayed my ability to focus on the important issues affecting our town today and for the long term. These are just a few things I supported during this term of council. As promised, I stood firm on ensuring that Orangeville residential taxation increases were kept to a minimum. A huge supporter of our business community through my leadership of the Business Economic Development Advisory Portfolio, key business attraction measures were implemented, resulting in significant growth and investment during this term of over $250 million in Orangeville's retail, industrial and external infrastructure sectors, creating hundreds of new local jobs. And this doesn't include the robust residential housing developments recently completed or those yet to be. I endorse the transition to OPP embracing the long-term financial benefits and significant law enforcement resources to support our community. I advocated for community safety measures, ensuring that our communities ended up and remaining that way. I also ended up during this term of Orangeville Council made myself readily available to the people of Orangeville no matter how small the issue might be. I'm proud of what has been accomplished yet there is still so much more to do. If re-elected, here are just some of the things I will focus on Orangeville Council. Continue to maintain a hard line on residential tax increases while also adopting a plan of action to tackle inflationary concerns. Address long-lasting infrastructure projects that must be carefully implemented and completed. Strategically examine how best to utilize the financial windfall from the sale of the Orangeville railway lands, as well as continue to advocate and support our growing senior population in Orangeville. You can find the rest of my re-election platform at my website, jaforangeville.com. Lastly, I urge you to educate yourself on the candidates running in this election. Having the right people on council is a must and a priority. By re-electing me to the role of councillor, you will have that experienced voice at the table to ensure that things will get done. My name is Joe Andrews and I'm seeking re-election as councillor on October 24th. Thank you. Hi, my name is Peggy Bond and I'm running for the position of councillor in the town of Orangeville. High property taxes have been a hot topic of conversation since I arrived here over 20 years ago. High property taxes disproportionately affect our people on a fixed income, especially our seniors and our disabled. But they are affecting everybody nowadays because of the rising costs of everyday items such as gas and food. If I were elected councillor, my priority would be to clamp down on those unnecessary expenditures that our town has gotten used to making. My duty as councillor would be to ensure that your tax dollars and my tax dollars were spent appropriately on programs, services and infrastructure that would benefit our community at large and to avoid spending on items that really provide no tangible value to our residents. So examples that I could sort of reflect upon would be that I would vote against spending $32,000 on the painted crosswalks in the downtown, knowing that there would be ongoing maintenance as well included the cost of the $50,000 for the consultant uh, to get an idea of where we should put the uh, transit hub and also the projected $250,000 for the free transit pilot project, which is slated to start in 2023. 
Another aspect of my platform that might set me apart from the other candidates is that I would tenaciously endeavor to have the current COVID-19 vaccine policy, the mandatory policy, rescinded for our town staff, volunteers, and contractors. And in its stead, I would put forward a policy that would prevent that kind of government overreach from happening again in our community. The right to bodily autonomy, the right to informed consent without coercion, the right to medical privacy and equal treatment before the law are rights that are fundamental in our democracy. And it is my duty as an elected representative in the best interest of the residents of Orangeville to make sure that our policies and our strategies reflect that respect of our residents' rights. So if you are tired of hearing it is what it is and you want to choose it is what we make it, then vote for me on October 24th or at the early election ballots. Thank you. My name is Nick, Nick Garisto. I'm running for the position of a councillor for the town of Orangeville. I have a previously served on council for six years from 1994 to 2000 and served as a deputy mayor from 2000 to 2003. I am running for council again because the need for experience in governing our municipality at this time in history has never been greater. I have that, that experience. Because of a crippling uh, inflation and other global issues, the town needs to manage more effectively areas such as taxation, ongoing essential services cost, while at the same time finding solutions to problems like affordable housing and the public works issues, etc. The most effective way of increasing revenue for the town is to secure a new industry, which in addition to incre increased tax revenue will provide many new jobs. Therefore, in addition to controlling spending, my focus will be on attracting and secure a new industry and business for the town. Planning for the future of the town is essential. With the existing service, the town can grow to a population of approximately 36,000 people, which will be up on us very soon. Beyond the number, we needed to be prepared for future growth. This this area, which I will be extremely focused on, and my previous experience on council, serves us all well. When dealing with this issue, on a personal note, I graduated from a Georgian college in the trades. I have operated my business in Orangeville for 52 years. My wife and I have raised our family in this beautiful community. My passion has always been to serve our community of Orangeville, which I have done in the past, I would like to continue to, to do so in the next four years. God bless. Have a nice evening. Hello, I'm, my name is James Jackson. I'm currently the MS ambassador for Dufferin Caledon. Pardon me while I have to take my glasses off to read to you. Um, in my position as the ambassador, I am the government liaison into all three levels of government. And through that position, I have learned a great deal about procedures and government. And uh, <clears throat> being the ambassador has given me that insight to how government procedure can, uh, is run. I am also on the, um, on the town's accessibility, the joint accessibility committee. I am the town's advisor for accessibility. I sat on the men's homelessness committee, and I'm also on the official plan steering committee for the town of Orangeville. And I love each and every one of those positions. It's giving me great insight to different things of how the town is running. And my current bid now is to run for a town councillor. And throughout my, proceed, throughout my research, I have found that nobody has ever been who has come out with MS 
has won a seat in political in any one of the three levels of government, and I plan to, and I wish to, be the first. <clears throat> I have, uh, excuse me, I plan on, uh, I lost my spot here, people, sorry. Uh, having MS is a blessing to me. It has opened my eyes up to a world that I was either blind or ignorant to. As I climb the corporate ladder in my world, um, of my life, my experiences, I have done a jack of all trades and a master of none is the term. And I'm glad I've done all those. I've learned so many different positions. <clears throat> I want to try and do, do something different in government. I want to bring empathy into government instead of apathy. I'm a very passionate person who fights for what is right, and I want to bring that same conviction to council. I, uh, I believe that we need to keep our taxes in check and watch our spending. We have to watch our water, our sewage. I want to bring um, affordability, accessibility, and well, basically living. I want, I want to help bring some living accommodations to our town. Our town seems to be limited with helping people. So in short, with your help, I wish to become a councillor for the town of Orangeville. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Hi, my name is Andy McIntosh. I am currently a deputy mayor. In the past, I was a member of the Orangeville Fire Department for 30 years, 19 of those as your fire chief. This year, I have decided to put my name forward for a councillor position. Last election, when I was out campaigning, I spoke to many of you. You told me loud and clear, the number one problem in Orangeville is taxes and the high level. I promised you at that time that I would work with a new council to fix the problem. I'm pleased to report that the town's 2022 tax increase was a low 0.83%. And in 2021, it was 0.97%, also very low. Both well below the rate of inflation and with no cuts to service. All this was accomplished in the middle of a worldwide pandemic, something that I and the rest of council should be very proud of. Folks, we are now heading in the right direction. Let's keep it going. If you elect if you choose to elect me for another four years, I will again work with council to continue these low rates. Another area that I am proud of as a council representative is how we have worked together. We had to. This town could not continue to have a council as we have seen in the past. Tax increases in the 5% range constant disagreement and infighting. Cooperation gets things done. And it has done just that during the past four years. So in closing, I would first like to thank you for electing me as your deputy mayor. And I hope that I can continue the progress that we have accomplished and to serve you for another four years as a member of your Orangeville Council. Once again, thank you. Hi, residents of Orangeville. My name is Tess Prendergast, and I'm seeking your support. I would love to be elected as one of the five councillors for the town of Orangeville in 2022. Orangeville has been my home for over a decade. My husband and I moved here when we started our careers in our late 20s. We bought our first home in Orangeville and we are raising our family here. 
We are actively engaged in the community, the municipality, and all of the wonderful things that Dufferin County and Orangeville have to offer. I am a teacher librarian at St. Andrew Elementary School here in town, and I also teach French. As a librarian, I am skilled in research, and I'll be able to provide a thorough, unbiased look at items that are presented to town council. My vision and values are aligned with the following. Number one, input of residents in all aspects of town decision making. We pay some of the highest property taxes in all of the province, and I pledge to be fiscally responsible and ensure that your tax dollars are spent wisely. Number two, I pledge to consider our impact on our local climate, and I would like to build a sustainable Orangeville for future generations. We will continue to develop and foster partnerships between community organizations and residents while also applying for and accessing grants from the provincial and federal governments to promote our vision for environmental sustainability here at the local level. And thirdly, municipal services that grow with and connect our community. We need to ensure that there's municipal programming from seniors to young children and everyone in between. I think Orangeville is a phenomenal place to live, to work, and to raise a family. My vision for Orangeville is that of a strong town, one that promotes active transportation, walkable neighborhoods, transit that connects all of our communities to our downtown hubs, responsible development that balances historic charm, cultural heritage, and with the needs of our growing and aging population a town that always considers and is accountable to the taxpayer. I see a livable, workable town for all ages and stages of life. Recently, I ran in the 2022 provincial election. I ran with a strong focus on healthcare, education, and the environment. I hope to bring those values to our municipal council. If you're community-minded, and if you want a voice, a strong voice to represent you and your family, at Town Council, please consider voting for Tess Prendergast on October 24th, 2022. Thank you. Hello, voters of Orangeville. My name is Debbie Sherwood, and I'm seeking re-election as Councillor for the Town of Orangeville. I've been a resident of Orangeville for over 40 years, and my family were born and raised here. I am currently retired, having worked in municipal government for over 35 years as a tax collector and deputy treasurer, 30 years previously with the town of Orangeville. As a certified municipal revenue professional and faculty with Seneca College gives me a strong foundation to make sound financial decisions in the council chambers. I will continue to be fiscally responsible and ensure your tax dollars will be spent wisely. My expertise in municipal taxation, general finance, and customer service is the experience needed. During this last term as a member of council, together we have achieved so much. Despite the unexpected challenges we faced, our council pressed on with a bold and exciting agenda. I want to continue the important work that we've started together, and I want to make sure that we stay on track to realizing our full potential as a community. Now is not the time to lose the ground that we have worked so hard to gain or put at risk the important progress that we made together. As promised in my last campaign, we were able to keep property tax increases at a record low without cutting services, and I will do my best to continue to hold the line on property tax increases, ensure a balanced budget is maintained, as well as controlling the level of debt and planning for the future. I want an approach to growth management that balances the opportunity for residential and employment growth while maintaining the community's heritage, culture, and historical character. Planning for the future ensures Orangeville's obligations are met and investments are secure with focus on maintaining our current businesses. I want to encourage public participation by the community on supporting and enhancing seniors and youth service and environmental sustainability. To ensure the residents of Orangeville have experienced representation that looks out for their interests, is spending your hard earned dollars wisely, ensuring services are maintained, 
I will always act in your best interest. It has been my honour to serve the community this last term of Council. And though we accomplished many great achievements, there is more to do. And that is why I'm asking for your consideration to re-elect me. I would be privileged to serve another term on Orange Hill Town Council. On October 24th, please re-elect Debbie Sherwood. Thank you. Hello, residents of Orangeville. My name is Grant Spence, and I'm looking to secure one of five positions on town council in our municipal elections this year. This year marks six years that I've spent with my family, living and loving the town and community which we have come to know. I'd like to take this opportunity to briefly describe my campaign and platform for the upcoming municipal election in October. In this time, I've been an active member of the community, volunteering at Credit Meadows, coaching soccer with the Orangeville Storm, making regular contributions to our local food bank, and also taking part in active community and neighborhood cleanup efforts. So why should you vote for me? I'm focused on making the voice of our community in town heard by council. We face a plethora of issues that we've all become familiar with over the course of the past several years, leading up to this current election. Noise pollution has been a concern highlighted by many residents in our town and is something that we have to manage by setting standards for what is reasonable for modified and souped up vehicles that utilize our roadways. Requesting further review of measures that may be taken to improve community safety is also a top priority. You may ask what that involves, whether it's finding ways to slow vehicles down in our growing neighborhoods by introducing more stop signs, replacing yield signs on high traffic three-way intersections, or finding cost-effective alternatives to stop signs like signposts being implemented in nearby communities and townships, which have proven to be effective measures to slow down dangerous driving. We're seeing younger families moving into our community, and we need to develop measures to be certain that as we evolve and grow as a town, that we're taking measures that respond to the need for improved safety on not only our roadways, but also in our common pathways and walkways, which are scattered throughout the community combination of low cost and cost effective uses of solar lighting and utilizing the hydro capabilities and logistics that are currently set up in our neighborhoods would help brighten up these common areas at night. As the community continues to grow, we need to be certain that everyone feels safe and comfortable and that they're able to walk through these areas at night without concern. A review of these existing areas where lighting solutions may be required would be an essential and positive development that would further improve the well-being of the entire township. Our property taxes are the highest in all of our province. Seeing this taxation reflected in the care and improvement of town property is something that is at the forefront of my concerns and platform as well. We also need to look further to develop and improve access to our health care for long-term care facilities and retirement communities for our elderly population, as our health care system continues to face unprecedented challenges currently, and this is unlikely to change in the near future. I'm excited about the opportunity to be able to get out in the community and visit all surrounding neighborhoods as I'll be going door to door asking you about the issues that are important and affect you the most. We will look to incorporate that into my campaign and platform as well. I appreciate this opportunity to share my platform briefly with you. I'll be sharing this journey on social media and TikTok and Instagram. My Twitter is at gspence19. Wishing all the candidates in this upcoming election the best of luck and please do your part and make your vote count in this upcoming election. There are opportunities to vote early if need be up till the very last day on election day, October 24th. In closing, I encourage you to let your voice be heard in this election. Choose to vote for Grant Spence for town council in Orangeville. Hi, my name is Rick Stevens. I'm running for Orangeville town council and I would like your vote. I have lived in Orangeville for the past 19 years with my wife, Sue, and we have four children. Amanda and Jake are both busy working and raising families of their own. Emily is working as a full-time registered nurse and Luke is in grade nine at Westside Secondary School. I wanna thank Rogers TV for hosting this event, giving the community a chance to see who I am and what I am about. I worked for the town of Orangeville for 25 years. I started in the Parks and Recreation Department and then in 1999, I moved over to the Orangeville Police Service as a special constable where I worked for 21 years. Being a town of Orangeville employee for 25 years, I had the opportunity to see firsthand some of the inner workings of the town. Over the years, I've seen several opportunities for cost saving improvements. I'm dedicated and caring when it comes to our community and I've always been contributing in some way. 
I am currently the president of the Orangeville Minor Hockey Association and have been for the past 15 years. If elected, I want council to control our property taxes. We need to better plan on how we spend our hard-earned money. We need to stop wasteful and unnecessary spending. Another issue in Orangeville is street parking and congestion. In some areas of town, cars are parked on both sides of the street, making this a dangerous situation for children, pets, pedestrians, and drivers. Council needs to take a closer look at planning when builders and developers put in new subdivisions. More parking needs to be incorporated into these new subdivisions so there is less parking on our streets. I want to improve our parks and recreation facilities. Our family travels extensively for sports throughout Ontario. We have seen some fantastic facilities in our travels for toddlers to seniors. When seeing these wonderful amenities in our areas, we realize that Orangeville is lacking in the variety and quality of facilities to include everyone from toddlers to seniors and people living with disabilities. Some of these items won't cost a lot of money. One very small example among many is to put roofs on the baseball dugouts so the young baseball players aren't in the sun for a two-hour baseball game. Orangeville is a sporting community and we need these services improved. We should have the facilities to be able to host competitions here in Orangeville for all sports groups, which in turn would bring in more tourist dollars. I am down to earth, approachable and honest. I want to represent the residents of Orangeville. For me, this is not just a political stepping stone. I have no interest in federal or provincial politics. I want to be a councillor in Orangeville and listen to your concerns and suggestions and bring them forward to council. I will work for you. I hope you get out and vote. I hope you vote for me, Rick Stevens. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Michael Dean, candidate for the Mayor of Erin, Ontario. I've been a resident of Erin on and off since 1983. My wife has also been a resident of Erin since 1983. We both attended high school in town and have grown up with our kids in the community. Today, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself, if you haven't already met me, and why I think I would be a good candidate for Mayor. I've worked in uh, the mining industry for the majority of my career. I've been a farmer for the majority of my life and uh, I really understand the sustainability of the ecosystems, the sustainability of water, and the sustainability of socioeconomic conditions that really will affect a small community like Erin. We're going into a new phase of growth. We have a lot of development coming, and we have to make sure that it's built properly and sustainably. We don't want to see any any hazards like the wastewater treatment plant failures in Orangeville have happened in the past. We want things to work smoothly. We also want to protect our neighbors downstream, making sure that we prote protect their ecosystem and their communities as well. I look at the, f at the future of bringing in a new multicultural community. Uh, we have to make sure that our facilities are there to support the new children that will be coming to town, the new adults. Uh, and we have really failed to support our seniors in our community. So I'd like to see us advance more seniors programs and even seniors residences in the community. Uh, low in income housing seems to be non-existent in Erin. We need to move that forward as well. If we have the opportunity, we should also increase the tourism base for Erin. Let's get some more people from outside of the community coming and spending money in the community. We've got some of the best equine facilities in North America. We have some of the best horses in North America. I think we need to capitalize on that more and look to how we can make that into a more of an ecotourism business. I think we should also look at how we can improve the agricultural uh, economy locally. We have some wonderful uh, small farms raising herbs, raising uh, honey, uh, fiber farms. Let's look at putting in a permanent large-scale farmers market that will attract people from Toronto, Brampton, Milton, Mississauga to Erin and add to our economic development. I thank you for your time today, and I do hope that you will vote for me.
Hi, I am Kathy Aylard. I am running to be your next councillor in the town of Erin. I am a first time political candidate. I am running for election because I believe together we can preserve the best of what we have and manage change to further enhance our lives and our community. I will do everything I can to make our community stronger, safer, more sustainable and livable. My focus will be to make sure our community is healthy and successful, socially, economically, and environmentally. Please visit my website, kathyforcouncil.ca to learn more about me and what I support. It is important to get to know your candidates. In the town of Erin, the election is done by mail. Ballots will be mailed to residents on September the 26th. It is recommended that you return your ballot by mail no later than October the 13th. Election day is Monday, October the 24th. Visit the Town of Erin website for full details. Please vote and make your voice heard. Visit kathyforcouncil.ca for my campaign updates. I look forward to representing my community at the council table. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm John Brennan. I'm asking you for your vote to elect me to town council. I want to thank Rogers for giving us the opportunity to speak to you. I also want to thank all of the candidates for running and giving us the most important value of democracy, the right to choose our government. It's been my privilege to serve on council, giving me a deep appreciation for what makes our town such a unique and wonderful place to live. I have served on many town committees and I've represented Erin on Wellington County committees at Hills of Headwaters Tourism Board and at both Grand Valley and Credit, uh, Grand River and Credit Valley Conservation Authorities. These experiences have given me a good understanding of how we need to interact with other government levels and agencies in order to get the best results for the people of Erin. It has always been important to me to balance the overall needs of all the taxpayers and to make decisions that are right for the overall good. At this point, we know we will have a wastewater system and that new development will be connected. Obviously, then we will have growth, and growth brings a number of benefits, such as sustainability for our schools, which are now threatened by under-enrollment, more users to share the fixed cost of the water system, an opportunity to attract industrial commercial enterprises to change the burden of the tax ratio, which now sits at close to 90% of residential homeowners and also to provide more local employment opportunities. A larger local customer base in order to support existing and new retail businesses, etc. However, it is important that we control that growth as much as possible in order to preserve the values, community spirit, and natural resources that make here in a place where we can continue to have the quality of life we now enjoy. We said that growth needed to pay for growth, and I'm proud that we've been able to finance the treatment plant and the main trunk lines at no cost to taxpayers. The question before us now is, how do we make those services available and, most importantly, affordable to our urban area residents? If it's not affordable, it will not be mandatory. Of course, our rural residents will not pay for either the capital costs or the operating uh, costs of the system but they will benefit from the positive impacts of the growth that I've already mentioned. My, strength, my experience, strengths and values will help to form a council that will make a better future for all of us. So I'm asking you to make me one of your four choices for council. I believe the future is not a place we are going tomorrow. It is a reality we are building today. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jamie Cheney and I'm a candidate for re-election as councillor in the town of Erin. Over the last four years, your Erin Town Council has been actively preparing for the future growth of our community. I have been honoured to be part of this positive planning process, working collaboratively with and on behalf of all who reside in our town. Yet more work is ahead of us as we make our way together into and through our new growth phase. I want to share with you four main ideas that I understand are most important to many at this time. First, to address new opportunities to come, your Town of Erin Council has created a set of urban design guidelines or community and architectural guidelines. I'm excited that, together with you, 
These guidelines will help us shape our new developments and have control over the design and flow of our community to meet the best needs of all. Secondly, your town staff are currently working on a Parks and Rec master plan. This crucial plan will guide the development of new exercise, sports and recreation facilities for all citizens over the next 20 years. As well, it will partner with our shared Hillsburg and Erin Heritage Walks and our current expansion of our Rotary Riverwalk Trail. I know these improvements will create a renewed sense of health, well-being, and community for all. Third, the last town council elected to foster a smart and sustainable growth of our town and make sure that we can meet the needs of all citizens for years to come. Council was voted in to move forward and install a needed waste recovery plant. This important facility is now in the primary stages of construction and with the main trunk lines will be constructed over the next two years. Sustainable growth with supportive infrastructure like the waste recovery plant will bring more and varied housing options to our town like attainable housing that for some is currently not available. I know that new neighborhoods of diverse adults and children will bring an enhanced vitality to our communities. Importantly, will help us keep our local schools open and our education system closer to home. I also believe that smart growth will offer accommodations for those wishing to downsize, allowing our valued multi-generational residents to stay within the community they currently love and enjoy. Finally, as a longtime member of the Town of Erin Heritage Committee, our shared past and collective history is as important to me as it is to many others in our community. I am committed to making sure that our charming downtown areas remain so now and into the future. Together, we'll preserve what makes our town so unique and welcoming and a place we will all remain proud to call home for years to come. In 2018, my election motto was community and common sense. And after going through a pandemic, I believe that is still the same thing we need to focus on. I feel strongly that it should remain for 2022 as I seek re-election as councillor in the town of Erin. I know this will speak to you as well. So on October 24th, I'd appreciate your vote. Jamie Cheney, councillor, town of Erin. Thank you. Hello, I'm Bridget Ryan, and I'm running for councillor in the town of Erin. I'd like to tell you a bit about myself. I live on a small farm with my family just outside of Erin and Hillsburg, and we've lived in the community for 23 years. My background has been marketing and promotion, and I have a small business in the community. The reason I would like to run and serve as a councillor is I feel it's really important if you live in a community to get involved. Have your say, jump in, help be part of the solution. So to that end, I have four areas uh, which I'm going to focus on during my bid for election. The first one is eco-sustainability. I believe we need a triple bottom line. We do definitely need profit. We definitely need to take care of our environment and the plants, and we need to take care of our people. So to that end, I would like to continue to support groups like the Soil Health Coalition, the Erin Agricultural Society, and the smaller community groups who really care about their natural environment and care about developing a green future for their children, their children's children, and the world to come. My second area of focus and interest is equine tourism and agritourism. We have a really nice group of smaller farms that are growing their local businesses, be it local food, flowers, experiences, cider, and I believe that's a really good base for attracting visitors and offering people who are coming to Erin to visit or to stay or looking to live here, a way to experience our local culture. My third area of uh, interest and where I'll be putting energy is heritage preservation. Erin is an older community based on farming cultural roots and we have some beautiful buildings, things that we need to protect and have for future generations which create soul, feeling, ambience within our community. Finally, I would like to focus on clear communications and transparency. Should I be elected as one of the Town of Erin councillors, I would like to communicate back to all residents what I've learned at council, 
what I will learn through my interactions with our town and I aim to help serve. Thank you. Hi, my name is Elaine Capes, and I'm running for councillor for the town of Mono. I've posted my background, qualifications, and involvement on my website, so you can see I have the skill, knowledge, and experience to do the job. I want to tell you why I'm running. I have a passion for Mono and a desire to serve, and this is no fleeting interest. Like you, we chose to live here. We love Mono's small town feel, its built and natural heritage, its beautiful greenness, and its night skies. Choosing where to live is a big decision and a big investment in family, lifestyle, and economic well-being. As a counselor, I'll be your voice to protect the investment we've all made and to preserve the landscape and ensure open and transparent and accountable government for operations and senior management. I have my own concerns and hopes for Mono, like keeping out the threat of big development, solar farms and gravel pits, keeping people safe in our communities and on our roads, and keeping Mono affordable. And I have a history of involvement on all these fronts. I'd really like to hear what your concerns and your hopes are for our town Connect with me at elainecapes.ca. Voting starts October 14th. Please vote, and I hope you'll elect me. Let's talk soon. Hello, I'm Melinda Davey, and I'm running for Mono Town Council. Please consider voting for me on October 24th. It's never been easier to vote. From October 14th at 10 a.m. until October 24th at 8 p.m., you can vote online 24-7 from home or during business hours at our town hall if you need some help. Online means you can use your computer, a smartphone, or landline. The town will send you a letter soon with instructions and your, with your unique identifier pin. Since my appointment last year, I've learned so much about the town of Mono and its operations. I feel like I'm just getting started and I would really like to continue next term as one of your town councillors. Being recently retired, I have ample time to devote to the job. I believe I have the skills required for complex, complex decision-making and collaborative work. I will continue to approach the work with an unbiased, humble, open-mindedness and a fair attitude while representing our residents' needs, balanced with the best interests of the municipality. It's only been recently that I've been able to get out and meet more residents as the pandemic has receded. And I can honestly say I love the people of our town. I'm eager to meet more of you and learn what your important issues are that I can help with. Is it safety, bylaw reinforcement, land development, road infrastructure and repair, recreation, heritage or diversity? Through the last 22 council meetings, I've brought a fresh angle to the discussions and I feel that council has made some good decisions for Mono. First off, when I started, there were the 2022 budget discussions. Council pushed hard to keep the taxes as low as possible, given the new levels of inflation that a COVID world had brought us. I believe we were able to do that with a very modest increase, way lower than the inflation rate, but that did mean that some compromises needed to be made. And those areas will need to be looked at again for 2023. I'd like to be a part of those discussions, representing you. Other issues in recent months have included high-speed internet, which seems to be on its way for us all, road and bridge repairs, bringing back our recreation events and facility rentals, town development and conservation area issues, just to name a few. I look forward to meeting as many residents as possible in the next few weeks before the election as I go door to door. My question for you is, Mono Town Council is your council. What are your concerns that I can help with? 
Please contact me at any time at melindaformono at gmail.com or message me on Facebook pages at Melinda Davy or call me at 647-294-7619 and we can have a chat. Please vote Melinda Davy for council in October. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bradley Mayor Harmon and I'm running to be your next counselor in the town of Mono. Uh, I have a family of two. Uh, my wife and I live in Purple Hill and uh, we absolutely love our community. Um, some of my background, uh, actually I used to work on a farm as a kid um, and uh, now I run a small business. Uh, I also uh, participate in a lot of community events and uh, I consider myself a community leader and I hope to continue that leadership on uh, Mono Council. Um, some of my experience that uh, would uh, be to the benefit of Mono residents would be my experience uh, obviously running a business. I have a lot of strength when it comes to financial prudence um, and, uh, and running uh, and helping with employees and so on. Uh, but also I've in been involved in a lot of nonprofit organizations too, uh, whether it be from helping with uh, food, local food banks, uh, Big Brother, Big Sister and so on. Um, uh, but also with my involvement in my professional career as uh, a volunteer for the Ontario Real Estate Association. I was on one of the largest boards serving over 80,000 members across Ontario. So I'm no, uh, no stranger to representing people uh, from a wide uh, uh, swath of uh, backgrounds. And so I hope to do the same in Mono because I recognize that uh, there's a lot of different people with different interests. And I want to make sure that you understand if as your representative, I will listen and take care to ensure that your concerns are brought to town council and addressed in a timely manner. So uh, what I hope to achieve in the town council uh, is obviously to have a collaborative relationship with uh, the other members on town council and to ensure that Mono residents' concerns are addressed. Some of the issues that I've been hearing at the door, if I haven't spoken to you personally, would be um, obviously environmental degradation being a concern, so make sure we support local farmers and, and the environment. Um, community safety, whether it be roads and speeding and other elements like that, and working with uh, the local police to ensure that uh, uh, safety is a top concern. And then of course internet uh, is a big concern for some and we want to make sure that everyone has high speed internet to ensure that their kids have a good education and have access but also the local businesses have access to that resource. And finally I want to make sure that there's no more tax increases. Uh, we maintain a low tax rate to in encourage those local residents who start uh, businesses in our community. Uh, of course, my end goal is to serve you and the community, so I always make myself accessible to you and your families. I look forward to seeing you in the coming days as I door knock across the community. And should you have any questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to reach out to me and my campaign. I'm here to serve. And uh, you can go to my website at votebrad.ca and um, please uh, consider supporting me and come out, uh, join the campaign trail if you wish. But in either case, I uh, ask humbly for your support and I look forward to representing you on Mono Council. Hi, I'm Gail Little, and I'm pleased to have this opportunity to present myself as a candidate for the position of Deputy Mayor for the Township of Amaranth. I have been a member of Amaranth Council for the past eight years, and I'm well versed on the many issues faced at the Council table. In Amaranth, I am committed to moving forward with additional infrastructure investment. As our, the traffic on our roads continues to increase, we must have a solid plan to replace bridges that have been long identified to be well past their useful lifespan. With appropriate planning, we can be positioned to take advantage of any grants or low interest loans offered by the provincial and federal governments. It is also important to invest in our community well being. By partnering with our adjoining municipalities, we can build a network of trails that connect our residents to our nearby towns, as well as provide safe places for 
hiking and cycling. We have been fortunate to be well served by local libraries, community centers, and conservation areas that provided much needed opportunities for our residents. It is important that we continue to work cooperatively with our neighbors to ensure that these facilities remain adequate to meet the needs of a growing community. Within our boundaries, we can expand and improve our local parks and play areas by adding basketball courts, outdoor ice rinks, soccer and lacrosse fields, and perhaps even splash pads. In addition, we could hold music events at the Township Office Pavilion. The third important task of Council is to update and implement policies that allow for fair and consistent measures to meet the needs of our population. By providing clear guidelines, our staff are able to work efficiently and effectively in addressing the many requests and applications that occur. It is absolutely essential that Amaranth have a workplace that is free of bullying, harassment, intimidation, and discrimination. Members of our staff, our council, and our community must feel safe and welcome at all times. An effective council encourages its five members to participate equally in the discussion in a respectful environment. As Deputy Mayor, I will have a seat on County Council where my experience and positive relationships will serve this township well. As the community continues to experience growth and increased demand for services, I will provide a strong voice to represent the interests of Amaranth. Please vote for me, Gail Little, Deputy Mayor Amaranth. Thank you. Hi, my name is Trisha Linton. I am your candidate for Amaranth, uh, Ontario, and I would just like to introduce myself. I'm Trisha Linton. I have lived in Dufferin County for the past nine years. Um, coming from Milton, I moved up here with my family and we lived in Mulmer uh, for three years. And then we came to live in Amaranth for the past five. I want to say as a candidate running that it has become really distinct and, and, and really understand coming to understand how the different municipalities work because everyone is distinct in their own right. But in coming to be a candidate, it has really been an honor of living in Amaranth and understanding the farming community and understanding how important farming is. And I think as your candidate, I think it's important to have those in conversations moving forward about what farming is for the future of Amaranth and what it means. And in moving forward, um, the growth of, of farming and really bringing, to you, bringing, to you, bringing your voices forward to the table. Um, one of the things that as your candidate, I really want to um, discuss is safety in the community and uh, the increasing uh, accidents and fatalities that's happening in the back roads and just bringing that to the forefront about how we can make our community uh, safer for our children and for ourselves. Um, another topic I would love to have a conversation with everyone about is just what it is to bring farming, your farming to the table and having those great conversations. Um, another important thing as your candidate and running an amaranth and, and that I'm very passionate about is, you know, using the facilities, having a farmer's market in the community, having, um, you know, the town of Amaranth starting hosting things. Um, another thing is neurodiversity. A lot of families and the unsung heroes of, of COVID and co going into COVID and coming out of COVID is the families that are living with neurodiversity, children and adults, and bringing that to the forefront. Um, that's part of what I am passionate about is hearing from the 
the families and starting from the basics and building a community that is united, building a community that understands one another and we can communicate those things in the municipality. Thank you so much. Hello, I'm Victor Ingmar Pond, and I'm here to ask for your support and ultimately your vote to be a councillor for the Township of Amaranth. For 20 years, I've been working in the live events industry. I've been working with many clients, including government, all levels. Uh, I've been working with pharma, association groups, and the corporate sector. And to those clients, I work to help them achieve their goals, listen to them, and build out services and technology that achieves their goals for the live events. 13 years ago, my wife and I picked up and moved to this great township of Amaranth. Our four kids have attended Laurel Woods Elementary and they've benefited greatly from it. A fantastic school. The changes we've seen in those 13 years since we moved here are incredible. The growth all around us on the borders of our township has been immense. We can see a change in traffic, the levels of traffic that are coming up our roadways, specifically south to north and north to south. Uh, we see a huge increase in traffic. And we have some, you know, some dangerous lethal intersections in our township. And maybe our infrastructure isn't ready to support this increased growth uh, surrounding us. Not just within our township, but those bordering townships that we're talking about. So what we need to do is think about maybe the safety. We have a lot of young drivers. We have a younger demographic now. And our roadways need to be looked at and maybe reassessed. Maybe we need some double lines thrown in on certain roads where higher density of population exists, higher density of homes. We have folks that are passing, um, creating quite dangerous speeds, uh, going through some spaces where there are pets and kids that are wandering out on those roads or, or could wander onto those roads. So we need to assess that. Also, I think that in our community with the changing demographic, the younger demographic, I think we're hungry to see some more events and activities in our environment, in our space, not so, rely so much on our bordering townships. And with that changing diversity, I think we also need to maybe adjust, you know, how our, our council has achieved these things. The past four years, you know, we've seen some of me as personally as a resident have seen some struggles with them maybe steered our council away from doing the things they need to do for our community versus some, you know, different areas. So with diversity and inclusion, top of mind and equity, um, we really need to look to the future and, and build our township for everyone. You can hear more and learn more at VIPAAN.ca. That's VIPON.ca. Thank you for your time. Hi, I'm Shirley Boxham, and I'm running for Deputy Mayor in Mulmer. I've been in Mulmer for over, over 17 years. I came to the area because it's beautiful, and we had a family history we wanted to connect to. My husband's grandfather was a blacksmith in Stanton, then Mansfield, and moved on to Creemore. My community involvement started at Foodstock. I spent the next few years building on the success of Stop the Mega Quarry by helping to start up Food and Water First, where I learned about community outreach. My corporate career as a learning consultant gave me a great learning lens for this. I attended events, did public speaking, and was an ambassador for farmland protection and respectful aggregate mining. Being out in the community with Food and Water First led to many connections with many people. I became the executive director of Headwaters Communities in Action, which is a platform for multiple projects, including Volunteer Dufferin, Headwaters Food and Farming Alliance, and others. I manage staff, budgets, fundraising, and a board. My volunteering continues as a board of director for the Dufferin Community Foundation. I was invited to run for council some years ago and found this past term to be very interesting and a new way to give to my community. I aim to utilize my career and municipal experience to ensure a bright future for Mulmer. I'm running to represent the priorities of Mulmer ratepayers. 
My platform is ensuring our fundamental needs are met while protecting the qualities that people love about Mulmer. One, controlled growth with a protected watershed. We have growth targets from the province, but need to ensure sustainability. People value the watershed, so supporting the CA in effective operations is essential. Two, maintain sound fiscal management and strong core services. We have very good staff providing excellent service. They have supported us in maintaining a median tax range. That good work needs to continue. Number three, supporting local businesses and housing options. The pandemic presented new opportunities and new needs. We need to support those who wanna work from home, build home businesses, and those who need housing options. Number four, building community. Engaging new and existing residents to participate. We've had some of that through our committees. I'm proud of the newsletter and its progress towards this as well. More can be done. Number five, I wanna underscore the above by demonstrating leadership, good leadership. I wanna recognize and encourage our residents and other counselors towards success. I'm gonna lead by example, share information and be transparent. I'm gonna do what benefits others first. True service to community isn't grounded in self-interest. Thanks very much for listening. Hello, I'm Daryl Stansfield and I'm running for town council uh, for the township of Malmer. I've had the pleasure of moving to, to Malmer last year with my family. We moved up from the city and we've been, we've been spending the last 10 years looking for, uh, for a place and, and certainly Malmer was, uh, was a place we, we fell in love with as soon as we, uh, as soon as we visited, went to the shops, did some of the hiking. We knew that that was a place for us. And for myself, I, I grew up in a small town. So that was something that I wanted to make sure that my kids did as well. And so uh, they, they, went to, they, they went to Primrose. My son's recently just gone to, to high school. But the community here is exactly what, what I wanted for them. It's been very receptive. Uh, we've been able to, to get involved and get back. I've helped out of the school. Um, I've, uh, I've helped coach my daughter's ball hockey team. And, and running for town council was, was the next evolution to make sure that we were, were getting involved uh, in the community and making sure that we're, we're, we're giving back. Um, and so when I was thinking about town council, uh, I was thinking back on my business experience. And so I've been in business like sales and marketing for the last 25 years. Um, and of that, the last five years, I've been running my own small business. So I understand what it takes to, to run a to run a budget, a multi-million dollar budget. I understand what it takes to, to build relationships. I understand what it takes to negotiate contracts. And all of that experience that I've learned over the past 25 years, uh, I get to, to bring to, to town council and help, uh, help run the business of Mulmer. And one of the, the big things within that is, is I have a knack for building relationships. And so that's with my colleagues, but also with vendors, suppliers, uh, even, even other um, even other competitors, and so I think that's that's a key thing to making sure things get done, and that what we're we're using a common sense approach uh, to to represent all of the people who live in Malmer, and so uh, I want to make sure that when we build the relationships, we're reflecting the whole community, and that when we're getting things done, we're taking a, a common sense approach, and then to be honest, when we're done. I want to make sure we communicate it, and so that's where I would use my background to make sure that we're able to to tell the um, the people of Malmer all the great things we're doing, and even outside of that, so that people will come and, and take advantage of of the great things we have in Malmer. So, uh, so if you want to learn more, more about myself, go to Facebook dot Facebook and search Daryl Stansfield, or you can search Daryl Stansfield dot ca. Uh, please please get out and vote. I'd love your vote, but more importantly, make sure you get out and vote. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hello, Melanchthon residents, and thank you very much for tuning in today. My name is Margaret Mercer, and I'm running in the upcoming municipal election for the position of Deputy Mayor of Melanchthon Township. For the past four years, I've sat on Melanchthon Council. My achievements include introducing the Road Safety Task Force into the municipality, along with the Heritage Committee and Environmental Sustainability Committee. These are a few of my goals and I was able to achieve them. These initiatives all tie into the township's official plan, which is to support the health and safety of our community. In the past four years, as my record shows, I have diligently attended meetings, advocated for resident concerns and asked questions in the interests of transparency. Boards I've served on include the Shelburne Fire Board, Centre Dufferin Recreation Centre Board, Nottawasega Valley Conservation Authority Board, Vice Chair of the Shelburne uh, Library Board, Hornings Mills Park Board, plus the Heritage Committee and the Environmental Sustainability Committee, including creating and running the annual Environmental Sustainability Day, which saw its second year in 2022. As Deputy Mayor, my first goal is to see that our gravel roads are paved and to ensure we have the funds to do so. The record shows that my opponent voted to keep our roads in gravel and lower speed limits. We are not served by having gravel roads because they are costly and unhealthy. This year alone already we have spent some half a million dollars putting gravel and calcium on Melanchthon roads, not to mention staff time and greater use. Over 10 years, this means we are spending close to $5 million to keep roads in gravel. Paving one road, however, would cost between $500,000 to $800,000, but would last 20 years or more. Perpetually breathing in gravel and calcium does not enhance our health. Plus, I agree with the police and transportation engineers that lowering speed limits alone does little for road safety. We need paved roads engineered for speed reduction with white lines and various enforcement measures. Secondly, the amount of industry in our small community is troubling. I'm committed to ensuring we do not have another quarry battle, but that we retain our rural and agricultural foundations. Thirdly, while on council, I've been concerned about resident issues that do not get resolved satisfactorily. My goal going forward is to introduce a resident relations process. I'm asking you for your vote on October 24th. I'm pleased to discuss the issues with you and I am looking forward to hearing your concerns. You can reach me online at margaretmercer.ca. We are blessed with superior land and fertile soil. We must endeavor to do whatever we can to protect this sensitive, important and finite resource. We cannot allow industry. We cannot allow bad planning. We cannot allow concerns related to, to expansion and development to destroy our way of life and our residents deserve more. My motto is working for you, working with you. Thank you for your time. I look forward to hearing from you. Hi. My name is Ralph Moore. I live in the hamlet of Riverview and I'm running for Melanchthon Council. As my three children are becoming young adults, 22, 19 and 17, it has given me a wonderful opportunity to run for municipal council. Growing up on a potato farm near the hamlet of Badgerows, I entered into the working world at 17 in the HVAC trade with a great work ethic pride in a day's work, and a mindset of make hay when the sun shines. I am a licensed red seal sheet metal worker and gas fitter and work for a local HVAC company. As my career as a tradesman advanced, I moved into management roles, managing million dollar projects, such as municipal buildings, schools, universities, and retirement homes. 
This experience has given me a vast knowledge of building business relationships with municipal and school board officials, engineers, sub-trades, also gaining critical thinking skills, time management skills, and meeting deadlines. I believe I have the skills the Melanchthon Council needs as a councillor. Good safe roads, united, transparent government, effective and efficient spending of tax dollars are some issues to be addressed. With the dramatic changes in our economy and its volatility, the Melanchthon Council will need to be diligent and insightful to maintain the quality of life we have been accustomed to. I will work hard as your council to sustain and improve this quality of life. On October 24th, vote Ralph Moore. Thank you. Thank you.